Good afternoon and welcome to the Midday News. Here's what we have in the bulletin. Concerns about appointment of Canadian professor to Jamaica's Constitutional Reform Committee. Foreign Affairs Minister issues warning to Jamaicans about questionable travels in foreign countries. And later in sports, under 20 reggae girls forced to have a delayed flight for a CONCACAF championship. Thank you for joining us. I'm Shamela Pullen. Here are the details. Concerns this afternoon regarding the appointment of Canadian Professor Richard Albert on the Constitutional Reform Committee. The two Christian-based groups, Jamaica Cause and the Jamaica Coalition for Healthy Society, say Professor Albert should be removed because he is a non-national and a distinct pro-LGBT and pro-abortion bias. Details in this report. Since being named, members of the Constitutional Reform Committee has had a continuous fight about the makeup of its membership. First, criticisms that the committee was too lawyer-heavy. The latest criticism is that a member of the committee has a pro-LGBT and pro-abortion bias. Social commentator and member of the Constitutional Reform Committee, Dr. Nadine Spence, says the concerns highlighted should not be the focus, but rather the expertise of the professor in constitutional reform. And there is no attempt in our deliberation to be tyrannical in, the, in our sharing of views. The committee has decided to move forward with consensus, meaning that the issues that we discuss are seen as com ha having come to a conclusion or an agreement when we have all discussed them and we all agreed. But I, I wouldn't want us to begin this process of discussion on the current constitutional conversation by imposing that reality on it. And um, I'm sure Dr. Daly recognizes that he's having a con, a con a, the, the church he, the, that he, group that he represents is moving on pure conjecture. Chairman of Jamaica Cause, Dr. Alvin Bailey, is adamant that Professor Albert should not be on the committee. He's of the view that he should be there as a consultant. It comes to the level of influence for a particular lifestyle that is illegal in Jamaica and that, of course, certainly would destroy the moral fiber. He comes with that proud accolade and I think that we have to have the confidence that our constitution is being dealt with in a way that is in our best interest and not in the interest of any other nation or group of persons that are of uh, practices that are not consistent with the behavior of Jamaica. Dr. Bailey believes that the influence of the Canadian professor is enough to sway the minds of the other 13 members. So I do believe that he comes with a little bit more weight than the average person on the committee, for sure, although he's one person. And that is very, very spelled out in the fact that persons are insistent that he stays there and the fact that we reached for him in the first place. But Dr. Spence is flabbergasted with the pronouncements by Dr. Bailey. However, she insists that the concerns raised are not the present focus of the committee. I'm taken aback by the kind of expression that says, you know, we, we don't want to hear some people, we don't have tolerance for some people, we don't want to be in the company of some people. But beyond that, I, I don't think for me the important thing is to discuss Professor Albert's opinion. As I said before, that's not what the committee is concerned with at this point. They were speaking on the morning agenda on Power 6 FM on Wednesday. O'Shade Masters, TVJ News. Major crimes are down compared to last year, but there are concerns about the increased brazenness of criminals to carry out daylight attacks in public spaces. This has sparked a new research to answer the question, does crime have boundaries? The research was conducted by the, by the Northern Caribbean University, NCU, and a breakdown was shared on TVJ's Small Jamaica this morning. Karen Simpson reports. After March 31, the police recorded 303 murders since the start of the year. That's a significant reduction when compared to the same period last year, which shows 382 murders. But there are still concerns over the increase in other crimes. Dr. Paul Bourne is Acting Director of Institutional Research at Northern Caribbean University, NCU. Jamaica is among the top five countries in the world, and I don't want to give you the exact figure. We're in the top five for the most murderous place in the world. So that is how bad things are. So what we want to make persons aware that 
of all the crimes committed in Jamaica over, I say, 21 year period, we're talking about 56,000 crimes. 49% of those crimes occur on a roadway. 15% of those crimes occur in the homes. He notes that there has been an increase in white collar crimes. They are shifting away from murder substantially. So we're seeing other crimes occurring in terms of missing people, abductions. Those are some things that we really need to address. And that we are saying, based on the statistics for missing people, including that of um, abductions, a number of these crimes are committed against young persons, persons less than 18 years old. Dr. Bourne also pointed to the prevalence of gender-based crimes. We take, for example, um, missing people, it is substantially a female phenomenon. If we take abduction, it's a female phenomenon. If we take robberies, murders, rapes, last thing, it's a male phenomenon. But not only male, uh -huh. young persons phenomenon, persons who are less than 35 years old or even 25 years old. So these young persons are committing substantial these murders, these rapes, these robberies, um, female that is. And in terms of the female aspect, we are seeing missing people and abductions being a female phenomenon. He explained that the aim of the research is to bring awareness to the general public. Based on the statistics for missing people, including that of um, abductions, a number of these crimes are committed against young persons, persons less than 18 years old. Mm. It's almost 6% of those crimes. So we are saying, parents, Jamaicans, we need to take a stock of what is going on because a number of persons who know these children are taking them away and we have got to put measures in place to address this problem. Interestingly, contrary to the popular rhetoric, the findings suggest that the root cause of these crimes is not poverty. In 1987, Derek said the society is structured in keeping with substantially what occurs during slavery. All the inequalities, injustices are occurring the same way in Jamaica now and those must be changed. They have not changed. So people are seeing injustice rampant in society and they are now acting out what is going on. In the meantime, he's calling on the nation as a collective body to take stock of what is happening in the country and address the root cause. Well, we are here at this juncture. What we need to do is now to take a stock of our actions. This matter now goes beyond politics, goes beyond those who are in the middle class or upper class. It's a matter that all Jamaicans need to take a stock. Let's not look at our actions or inactions. We are creating a part of this monster. And our children no longer are seeing us as role models. They want to actually eliminate a number of us because of what we have done to them in the past. So we are saying, let us start addressing the problem that we're having in Jamaica. Otherwise, many of us are going to have to dig a hole to go on to survive or go somewhere else to live. Kerry and Simpson. Residents in Hanover are lamenting the slow pace for the replacement of a bridge that collapsed on the weekend. They are also blaming their political representatives for the collapsed bridge. More in this report. It's been four days since the Hillsborough Bridge collapsed in Hanover. Residents of Flower Hill, Hillsbrook and Woodsville and surrounding areas who use the bridge daily say since the incident, their daily commute has been a nightmare. Children cannot go to school. Your children can't go to school. Your sick parents cannot travel to the hospital. You understand what I'm saying? How would you feel? Well, that is how residents of Woodsville are feeling. Businesses too have been impacted. This woman told TVJ News that in addition to losing business, everything, including transportation cost, has more than doubled for her. Even getting to Montego Bay, that's where I travel. When the snap of a time, you're into Hopewell, you catch a vehicle from there to Montego Bay. Now I have to go to South, Witton, Montpelier, to, to reach Montego Bay right now. So that's going to take a longer time. It's going to take a longer time and it's going to cost more money as well. They are blaming their political representatives for what has happened. We are, we are suffering as a result of poor representation. So you're saying that this bridge could have been saved if they just hear what the residents yes. were saying from day one? We told them that um, the, what they call it, the Gabian basket, they could have done something like that and, and help to, to um, mend the problem. The road, the bridge could have been fixed and nobody listened to us. They had a meeting with us. They came and told us pure lies. And, and you know, we are paying our taxes 
and we are not getting any representation. So what must we do? They say more attention needs to be given to the situation for the bridge to be fixed soon. And you guys need to move with some level of alacrity and dispatch and go in the community and help and not only just repair the bridge, but give them a good bridge. In the interim, you can start by giving them a building bridge. What has happened to these persons in this community is a travesty. They have been forgotten. It's like they're on an island and they're all alone. You understand? And none of you persons in our authority, from the Prime Minister come all the way down to the councillor or the member of parliament, would not sleep one night proper in their bed, knowing that they do not have a bridge to go home. Meanwhile, on Tuesday, the National Works Agency said it was preparing drawings for the replacement of the bridge. Foreign Affairs Minister Kamina Johnson-Smith is raising concerns about a number of Jamaicans traveling under risky circumstances to get to other countries. This comes after Belize immigration officials imposed visa and other restrictions on Jamaicans entering the country, following concerns that Jamaicans are disappearing after entering the country. Speaking at a post-cabinet press briefing this morning, Mrs. Johnson-Smith said in some situations, individuals are even taking taking children with them. Exposing them to dangerous situations, including kidnapping, trafficking, and even death. I know that um, some of you would have met, read in a particular publication this morning uh, that the government of Panama and the US are taking steps to tighten uh, patrol and movement through a particular routing, which they have identified as a route for illegal migrants. And we are trying to be proactive and bring to the attention of Jamaicans that this is not a good decision to take. Mrs. Johnson-Smith says this also affects the reputation of the Jamaican passport, which the government is trying to strengthen. We're increasing the security within the passport, embedded in the passport, to ensure that it cannot be replicated, that um, our border control procedures are stronger, our customs processes are stronger. All of these things are to seek greater facilitation of movement with a Jamaican passport. And actions and decisions like this they, they really do fight against the efforts of the government and they do affect the reputation of the passport and the immigration experience of our lawful travelers. It's time for the Business Minute. The Managing Director of the National Export-Import Bank of Jamaica, Lisa Bell, will step down from the position effective April 30. The announcement follows reports that the government plans to merge the Exim Bank and the Development Bank of Jamaica. In a release announcing her departure from the entity on Tuesday, the board said under her leadership, the bank's loans portfolio was significantly expanded to the productive and MSME sectors. She also spearheaded the modernization of the bank to provide financing support to the productive sector. Bell joined the Exim Bank in 2010, having previously served at Jampro as Vice President. U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen is painting an optimistic picture of the U.S. and world economies. That's despite the troubling International Monetary Fund's Global Financial Stability Report released on Tuesday. It notes stress from recent bank collapses comes at a precarious time as central banks try to rein in inflation. Yellen calls the U.S. banking system sound and points to recent moderation in U.S. inflation. During the G20 in February, I said that the global economy was in a better place than many predicted last fall. That basic picture has remained largely unchanged. Prices of commodities like food and energy have stabilized, supply chain pressures continue to ease, and global growth projections remain higher than they were in the fall. And that's it for the Business Minute. I'm Hal Shane Burke. And here's a preview of what's coming up in this evening's health report. In this evening's health report, we look at pneumonia. It's usually caused by, uh, by a, a bacteria. Bacteria, the commonest cause of a bacterial pneumonia is streptococcus pneumonia, which is in the community. 
But what we need to remember is that even in the community, you have viruses. So we, 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 we think of pneumonia in different categories. Community acquired pneumonia, where we think of the commonest causes are streptococcus pneumonia, and we think of viruses and some other little organisms out there that we think of as atypical organisms. That's the health report in primetime news at seven. And now for today's healthy living tip. Get plenty of rest. Don't go back to school or work until after your temperature returns to normal and you stop coughing mucus. Stay hydrated and take your medicine as prescribed.